This movie has, the truth in this movie is uh, cut out of cardboard somewhat, let's say. He's cut, uh, he, he's making it, it seems that he's making it a, uh, a somewhat constructed uh, improvisation on, on this theme of uh, what's there? I don't know if there's a gentle word, but it doesn't come to mind. But racism, uh, that's what it feels like. As we all sort of know, uh, it, the film is basically only in Hermano's mind and it it's, hasn't really taken shape and he's taken it upon himself and us to build it as we go, which is very interesting. I would, you know, it's, it's an exercise I would love to to have for any filmmaker. It's an exercise on, uh, on improvisation too. Yeah. And I think, I personally think that improvisation is the art of acting. Um, no, I, I don't think so, but I think, uh, let's see, it, film is an improvisation of movement, I guess. It's not intellectual. It's sort of a different medium anyway, but it's a, it's a very strong one. The visual the visual element of film is is a lot stronger than I would say than the intellectual uh, movie. <laughs> but you know, um, the power. I think we've learned to understand the power of film and the cliches as well. Uh, the cliches are used all the time. Now I think we need to find ways to escape from the cliches because, but there's a funny thing in film is that we cannot build a film without using some of the cliches. It's almost like you cannot be that abstract in film. I think you can be, but I think your audience will be limited, which is fine, you know, that's fine now. The Blade, Blade Runner is very much like uh, 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 a sort of an exotic form of opera and action and visual, visual fencing almost uh, based on the idea of the future and what it would look like and be like. Uh, the, the strong thing in, in, you know, you cannot build the future so you have to use a stage. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's funny, but it did feel like an opera, and I felt that it was necessary uh, towards the end of Blade Runner to bring it home. And I'm really good at bringing things home, not always, but bringing home, bringing it home to. You know, don't don't start flapping on me. Don't give me the happy end of Blade Runner. Don't fly into space. That's bullshit. Bring it home. You know, and I think I was very lucky to 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 bring it home in the character of Batty, because the film is about him and his uh, his quest for truth of life and and understanding what it is, rather than Harrison Ford's character, who has the same quest. He has the same quest, but he's losing. And the fact that Batty, at the end, decides in one split second to give him what he himself would like most is a very generous, generous moment. And that's where everything suddenly, the truth, the real truth, and that's the funny part is, the real truth of the replicant and the artificial memory uh, driven machine sort of reveals the real truth of love and um, generosity and you know and that's like a contradiction completely but it's great you can only do that with film but, but no i'm talking about blade runner also if uh, it is very far away from this movie because there you had a script to read because ridley scott was giving you a script no and the script was coming from a great book also no yeah, yeah, no, the script, I mean, the script had worked on, I don't know how many versions, there were like seven or eight versions, and uh, yeah, this is not a film, this is, we don't even know what it is yet. This one? Yeah. 
Exactly. This what this is what I want to talk yeah. about. No, you don't have any script, yeah. and you got you just have uh, what Hermano is telling you. Mm. So Hermano is uh, sometimes uh, uh, saying some scenes uh, or or nothing at all, and then uh, you have to 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 build up your character shooting. He's making my character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's it is. It is. It's been in the back of my mind uh, to to workshop this idea, and uh, I would love to do it. The only thing that is, in this case, is still in the middle is the language barrier. I would like to hear Emano speak and be his voice, and I'll let him take me. But that link we cannot make. But we'll make the spiritual link. We're doing that anyway. But it's not as direct. It's sort of, you know, it's, there's like one barrier, which is the language barrier. I don't feel it a lot with the mano. I understand quite, quite a bit. But I'm sure you can tone it down. The, uh, the language barrier, you can tone it down. We will see. Yeah, we will see. We'll see. Because uh, I, I have a feeling that even if he would say things in Italian. I would probably say I could probably translate the, you know half of them, and the other half is nonsense. <laughs> but I'd love to do it, you know. I'd be fun. It's a good challenge. Yeah. And yeah. what what about uh, Rudiger? What about your your makeup? I've seen that it is very nice, very very also heavy makeup because you really change as a as a. Well, it's not a lot. It's just that you know, it's there are a couple of things that really seem to work, and and uh, since uh, Mano wanted to to find a character that would you know would bury me, so to speak, and that I you know would would be vanishing in a way. Uh, we we went all the way, and and uh, I was a little bit afraid of the contact lenses because I didn't know how my eyes would respond to it. But they work very very well, and every you know there are a couple of ingredients there that were well done, and it's it really works, and uh, it's fun. It's circus. And because your eyes are getting darker. I am colorblind. I know I don't know what color they are, but. Uh, they 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 have a different color than my own eyes. Yeah. It was very nice when uh, you remember when we were shooting here. You were asking to Hermano if you could have a dog. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, why you, this question? What we were thinking about when you were asking about the dog? Somebody to talk with or the dog? Yes, I know. You know, I'm sort of I'm trying to find where the barriers are for. The character and I, because I don't want to make him flat, and I don't think I can make him flat. Then he should ask a different actor. Even if I don't do anything, it's still a, he's still going to have more heart than a cardboard. <laughs> and, but we'll see. It's it's see. I need to understand what his what his what his. Uh, what the cardboard idea is, and then still I feel that it might be an interesting challenge for me to see where, where I can uh, escape a little bit. So it, it, it's uh, almost, so you have cliche, 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 and then you have one moment where you break it a little, just be, to make it a little more feel there's a little more something going on, not just the, not just the behavior and formal. Um, it, even if you would, if, if I would do the same, pretty much the same as he, like he's asking me, it's just a different way of going. You would, as a viewer, you would, you would be waiting for something else. If I do the same as an actor, in the character, I do the same, the same, the same. You'll be waiting for me. And then, of course, you know, if there is a big change, you'll be ready for it. And maybe that's his, that's his idea. I don't know his secret. He's not going to tell me before the day. <laughs> but I have, to, I have to find a way to swim, you know? Was the same situation in the only drinker? 
No, the Howdy Drinker, we understood each other from the start and the story was very clear. How, you, how we were going to do it was not very clear, but the story was very clear and, uh, and Emano was very clear in what he wanted anyway. He, he knew much more about the character than I did. He just didn't know how I would, how I would form it. And uh, this morning, I mean, there's, there's this wonderful, and it's, this is where I live. Uh, uh, there's the coincidence in, in what we're doing now is almost, almost all coincidence, what we're doing now apart from the structure. We have some structure, but most of it is we don't know what we're going to do. I love that. I love that. Uh, in, in The Holy Drinker, we had like, I, I asked him the same question. I asked him about the dog because I wanted to see if this character could talk to someone and that someone could be his dog, you know? The Holy Drinker, man. Yeah. No, in this film, I asked him, I asked him out for the dog, okay? And he went, what, what dog? Exactly like in The Holy Drinker, I asked him for a dog too, and he went, why? Okay, and I'll tell you about The Holy Drinker in a second, but for this film, I wanted a dog because I wanted to have somebody to talk to if I would feel like it. I don't want to talk to nobody in film because that is stage. To be or not to be, you don't talk to walls in films. In life, yes, maybe. On stage, yes, all the time, but in film, I don't want to do that. So I was looking for it. Then this morning, I went back to him and said, Hermano, uh, do you remember I asked you for a dog for the second time? And he went, hot dog. And I went, the dog, the dog. And he said, Hermano, there's a joke in English, dog and God are the same way. It's just the same letters, but they're in a different way. And I said, Armano, I have found somebody to talk to. It's up there. But, of course, it's... He said it's up there. No, I said, yeah. I said it's up there, and then my interpretation of the dog or God is that he's always here anyway. So now I feel that I've found, in this environment, I can talk to my dog and God all the time. <laughs> Uh, there's no, there's no wall. And so that gave me a confidence. I don't know in this film if I will be talking to any of those guys. <laughs> because maybe he won't let me. But I'll work on some inner thoughts as we go along. And I'll have it in my memory. And I'll, you know, I can shoot it at any time, basically, if he wants it and if it fits. The other story about the dog, the first dog, 23 years ago, I said to her mama, I want the dog. And the mama went, can I please have a dog for this scene? I'd like to see what happens with the dog. And in my mind, a homeless guy sleeping under a bridge and another dog, homeless dog, it sort of made sense. And maybe, you know, there was some, maybe I could give him a piece of my bread or I don't know, vaguely. Okay, so they got me a dog. The dog came late. We shot the scene. As we finished my scene, which was fine, the dog arrived on the set. And, uh, and I said, OK, well, too bad for the dog. But, uh, you know, ciao. Then Hermano used the dog in the next scene. And this is where it becomes really exciting for me. So the dog was there for one reason. Then he was used for another reason. And then the dog does something in the film that is it's nothing. It dog do, dogs do this all the time. At the same time, it's poetry. The dog smells the real homeless guys who were there, had a piece of bread together, and the dog, you see the dog go, wait a minute. And he goes up to this one guy who just ate it. And, went, and it's nothing, but it's, you cannot, you cannot make this. And in, in the homeless reality, I found this so real. And I didn't know, you know, I didn't know he was shooting this, but it happened. This part is brilliant. The brilliance of coincidences of weather and wind and rain and Cold. mistakes, mistakes.
Mistakes are great because every mistake creates something else. So the moment somebody fucks up or I fuck up, I go, okay, let's see what happens now. Because the plan is always only so long and a film is a horrible thing to plan anyway. But then something, then there's another reality, which is the real reality that starts to come into play. And I love that part.